What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Barefoot Garage and part one of wiring the Haltech ECU into my Porsche 914. All right, we are back in the garage and the car is back on the ground. So there's still a couple things to do underneath, but honestly, it was too cumbersome to work in the engine compartment from the top with it on the jack. So uh, when I need to do the CV axles and the swing arm bushings, uh, I'll just jack it back up. Today, we are going to begin the wiring process. So I spent a couple hours the other night uh, just kind of pulling off pairs and pulling out some wires we're not going to need. The nice thing about the Haltech loom here, this is the universal loom, is uh, you can push on this tab and pull out the pins you don't need. So you can see uh, there are some pins missing. There are, this is the same connector they use for like all the single connector ECUs. So like the 550, the 750 and some of the other ones. Uh, but it has some things we're not gonna need. So uh, we only need four ignition outputs or really less than that. And we only need six uh, uh, outputs for, or four outputs for fuel injectors. Uh, so I've gone ahead and pulled some things out. Uh, but really the first step in this process is to decide where the ECU is gonna go. So uh, I really have debated about this. I've consulted some other friends about it. Let me show you kind of what we're dealing with here and uh, why we chose the location that we did. All right, here's the brains, the Haltech Elite 550 single connector ECU. This is what I would call like their base model, but for my application, it has 5,000% more power than we're ever gonna need till we get really serious uh, uh, with this engine or do anything crazy. So uh, pretty much uh, one of the smallest ECUs I've seen, just mounts with four little screws. But one of the challenges in the 914 engine compartment is that there are almost no flat surfaces. I got my torsion springs for the trunk. Uh, we got fuel connectors, the battery's out, so that's kind of out of the way. Uh, if you look, right down there is where the stock computer went. And I did look at that location, but if we look at the ECU, it's got two status lights on it, and I wanna be able to see those. So if I'd mounted it like this, we wouldn't have been able to see that. Um, we talked about putting it on the back there behind the torsion springs. We talked about above the relay board, and we tried that spot, but the relay board uh, cover would not come off very well. And we also talked about putting it inside the car or inside the trunk. Now. Pretty common thing to do, especially if you're V8 swapping these cars, is the engine computer or Subaru swapping goes into the trunk. Now, I use the trunk, I put the top in the trunk, I don't wanna keep that functional, uh, but my main thing was that if I need to service the harness, change something, add something, remove something, whatever I'm doing, I don't wanna to have to pull the harness all the way through a grommet or put a huge hole in the car for a grommet. So I uh, kind of ruled out inside the car, I ruled out inside the trunk. And the only limitation to this is gonna be when it's time to program or plug into this, I'm gonna have to find a tuning cable that'll reach from my current choice location all the way up to the driver or the passenger seat for the laptop. If that's the biggest thing we have to deal with, then we'll, we'll deal with it, not a big deal. So let's take a look at the preferred spot I have chosen. All right, so I've got the camera in the engine compartment uh, right by the plenum and the oil fill kind of right in the center of the car. And the spot that I have chosen is right here. Um, I can see the status lights. It's out of the way. It's really not near any heat. Uh, I can get to the connector. I can get to the map sensor port, uh, everything I need to get. But unfortunately, it's not very flat. So I'm going to build a little plate. Uh, put some rib nuts in it, and then I'm gonna tack it in place to the car. So I would, honestly, I'd rather weld this in than uh, drill some holes and rib nut it straight through to the fender, because this is just single wall goes through to the fender. There is reinforcement that I've put in that GT stiffening kit on the other side, so I don't really wanna drill through that. So um, we're gonna jump over to the bench and look at this bracket. Um, I wanna make this fit nice and tight, uh, contour well to what we're building here. So uh, I'm gonna really take my time, but that is gonna be the preferred location. I don't see any notes about orientation, up, down, sideways, whatever, but um, that'll look pretty trick. It'll be accessible because I have my relay panel right over there, and I'll be able to pull some wires off that for uh, coil, um, what was the coil power and uh, tack sensor and signal and everything like that. So let's jump on the bench and get this thing mounted. All right, I got my ECU and I got some metal. This is what I have around. It's eighth inch plate, which is totally overkill, but it's gonna be fine. So I'm gonna take and go ahead and get my ECU in here. I got a awesome new set of center punch punches. So I'm gonna just grab one here and estimate my size. 
But basically, this fits into the hole, and it lets you punch in the dead center of that hole, so you're not trying to do it with a marker. Uh, if you're not watching Finnegan's Garage, you should check that out. I learned a lot of cool fab tricks from them. And if you're not following my friends over at Retro Renos, he got me to get this contour gauge so I can make my bracket super custom here. So uh, let's get this cut out and we'll go test fit in the car and then we'll start making the sides. All right, I got my plate, got my ECU. Let me get that on there. And I'm gonna use, like I said, what's called a center or a transfer punch. And the goal is to find the one that fits snugly inside there. And then what I will do, so I'll flip it over, I'll put that there, I'll punch it, and then I'll have a dead center of the hole in order to uh, put in my riv nut. So I'm not sure what size I'm gonna use, probably M4, M5, whatever one of the smaller metric sizes is. So uh, let's get that punched and ready to roll. All right, so here's what's happening. Got my plate, got a couple of rib nuts in it, and uh, I got two. That's all the M5 bolts I can seem to find. I'll get some more tomorrow, but it's enough to continue with our process here. So we're gonna go ahead and build the whole thing and build the sides and whatever we need to connect it with, and then I'll take it off the bench, finish the rib nuts, and uh, get it put in the car and tacked in. So let's go over to the car and I'll show you how and where this is gonna be. All right, so that's about the best angle I can show you and still have two hands here. So I made this flat plate and the goal would be to tack it in the back and make kind of a leg across the front here and leave the back open. So because of the depth of the rev nuts, it's gonna have to come off a little more than I was hoping, um, but we will probably put it right up against like this. And then I'll start marking up and making a template for the cardboard and uh, We'll make a nice leg across the front and uh, go from there. So we have a tape measure, make some measurements, and then uh, we'll get that contour gauge in here and cut a piece of steel for the front, and we'll tack it and test fit it. Let's go. All right, so our bracket is made and it took a little longer than expected. I could definitely have dealt with something a little bit thinner, but that's what I have and it uh, is already paid for. So let's take a look at how the bracket fits and what it looks like in the car. And then we'll grind a little bit of back and uh, get it tacked in place. So here's our bracket outside the car. You can see it just has one leg. I've tacked it on the inside here. I'll probably won't even fully weld this outside seam because this is super overkill. I just have two bolts in it now and I'll get a couple more in there, but honestly, two is probably fine. So let me set the camera down. Perfect, you guys can see exactly where it's gonna go. Um, so it is going to go basically right here. So 
Uh, the legs on the back and the front land at uh, a style line or a little uh, indentation on the body. So it'll be a little bit stronger place to weld to. Um, so I have gone ahead and marked it with a pencil. I'm happy with the connector clearance around everything. Got a good air gap all the way around the, on the, around the other sides. This is not used, so I'm not worried about that. And I'm um, pretty satisfied with that mounting position. Um, looks good. It's going to work well. Once it's painted black, you'll almost not even be able to tell it's there other than seeing the ECU. So uh, we're going to get the engine compartment cleaned up, maybe get a little weld through primer on here and get it put in place. There's our ECU mount. Um, it's honestly not going to take that much load. I've got some welds down this side and down this side. I can't get my MIG gun that far down. So I'm going to just give this a quick coat of black paint, just kind of dust this over. And then uh, the ECU already fits. I've test fitted that. Once the ECU is in place, we will know how to start running the wires, how to terminate them, and how much link we need. So give this a quick look at paint, and then we'll take a look at the wiring. Time to dig in to the wiring. So I've spent considerable time studying the diagram, looking online, looking at the stock diagram, matching wire colors, sensors, plugs, everything like that. So uh, my goal here is to get all laid out on the bench, make sure everything's where it needs to be. I have it laid out in the car, driver's side, passenger side, ECU where it's gonna be, and I will walk you guys through it. Um, so we'll go through this pretty quick. The goal is going to be to uh, put this in the car uh, and make sure everything right lengthwise. I have some stuff coming from wire care, some wire protection, heat shrink, just wire stuff to make this look a little bit nicer. Um, I'm going to get it all cut to length, make sure that it's perfect. Then I'm gonna uh, shield it, heat shrink it, crimp it, uh, connectors, heat shrink those in place, and then we will be in good shape. So let's take a look at the harness. All right, we're gonna start up with the ECU. This is gonna mount on the driver's side, uh, behind the relay board, uh, kind of on the, I guess what you would call like the inner fender. Uh, main connector for the ECU goes in, and this is a can output, uh, if you're gonna run a dash, whatever like that. We'll just plug that for now. So we're gonna move this way, and I've got a couple of wires tucked off uh, that I don't believe I'm gonna use. Uh, so this orange and this black and white, that's a ground and a 5 volt for a sensor. Uh, eventually I will use that, but for now most of my sensors are going to stay analog. This uh, bundle uh, is actually shielded and that's for a cam sync or a cam signal uh, that I don't have. So we're going to run Wasted Spark um, or Batch Fire. So for now I'm going to leave this. I would pull this out of the harness, but the shielding is tied into this other uh, shielded cable, and so we're just going to take this out of the way as best as we can. Currently, these are the only wires that I do not know where they go, so I'm going to have to call support and talk to them. I can't quite sort this out on the diagram, so these are my only mystery wires. Uh, 
first branch we're going to have coming off is injectors one and two. The uh, ECU outputs ground for the injectors, so eventually I'm going to have to run a power wire in here uh, to put hot power keyed to all the injectors, probably with a relay. Uh, coming out this way, this is the stock harness with some of these things we're going to retain. So the oil pressure dummy light, the tack signal, which I'm going to pull off of the ECU. My understanding is that I can use one of these digital pulsed outputs uh, for a tack signal. Uh, that is also a question on my list for the support guys. Um, and then I've got a keyed positive 12 volt uh, that would go to the coil. My goal is to use this to connect to this. Uh, which is the key to positive power for the ECU. So I'm hoping to make that connection right here. Uh, next thing we've got on this side is the fuel pump. Um, this is the fuel pump trigger. And if we go to the board over here uh, for the stock relay board, if I take and pin it right here where the number three is on the ECU connector for the old school system, uh, I can use the ECU to send power through uh, the stock fuel pump relay and trigger it with the stock wiring, no additions needed. So I'll just put a blade connector on that and hit this right here. So as we move across the car, the next big thing we're gonna come to is the crank trigger. Here's the plug, this is the shielded wire. Um, I need to make sure I get the wiring correct on that. There are two types and I am not 100% sure which one it's gonna be, but I'll note that here. Next thing we have, TPS. Next video, we're gonna have the TPS information and make that adapter plate. That aluminum should be here this week. TPS goes right here in the middle. Right under the TPS is that air intake temperature sensor that we're gonna run on the air box. Continuing to move across, uh, this is where our coil is gonna sit. I currently left all four ignition outputs in there. I know I don't need four, but I'm not sure if I pull two and just run two uh, with the power to the coil. Uh, I need to learn a little, a little bit more about how that gets hooked up to make sure that it works. Continuing to move across, now we're on the passenger side of the car, uh, the bank for three and four. I've got my cylinder head temperature sensor adapter, special deal from Dub Shop. So this is gonna be the temperature for the engine. Uh, it's gonna pretend to be a GM water temperature sensor uh, from a calibration perspective. And then as we move all the way across, we've got injectors three or four and a ground wire going to the battery. Um, these are the connectors for the stock style injectors. I've used these a bunch of times. They come from a place called D-Jet Parts out of Germany. Um, comes with the pins, comes with a little tool. They're not super high quality, um, but they do work. I do feel like they're an OEM style connection. I have boots uh, and I ordered eight because uh, if you get it wrong, it's very difficult to get these back out. So my goal is gonna be to crimp them, pen them, and then actually probably put uh, some kind of silicone or something around it because it's kind of a loose fit. So we'll use that for injector wires. So that is the harness. The next thing we're gonna do is once we get a couple of bolts, we will bolt our ECU in place and then we'll start laying it out and trimming things to length here. So some questions to be answered about these wires, about um, how to set up the crank trigger, how to set up my ignition, and then making sure we get a signal back to the car for the tack. Um, so I need to spend a little bit of time on the phone with the dub shop and a little bit of time on the phone with Haltech and get those questions answered. And then we'll start pulling wires. All right, guys, that's what we're gonna end off tonight in the Barefoot Garage. So I feel like the harness is prepped. I need some questions answered from the guys at the dub shop and from Haltech to make sure that I got things set up the correct way or that I understand the correct way for it to be set up. So we need to grab some bolts for the ECU. Once that's in place, I feel comfortable going ahead and trimming the wires to fit, uh, adding or removing pins to my ECU connector as needed. And then we'll start plugging that stuff in. So soon we're going to tackle that TPS adapter plate uh, and kind of home machining that. I hope that piece of aluminum will be here soon. So as always, stay tuned to the Barefoot Garage here on Instagram at uh, Barefoot Garage Jax and here on YouTube. Feel free to leave us a comment. Let us know what you're working on on your 914 or what do you think about our project. I know a lot of guys are following along and hoping to do something similar. So uh, there will be a link to a Google spreadsheet with every part that I've purchased, direct links, costs. You can see what adds up, what works for you and where you may wanna make a modification. So stay tuned to the Barefoot Garage and we'll see you guys soon.